VC, a podcast all about Ventura County real estate. My name is Reed Fish. I am the CEO of Upmarket Media, a real estate media company based here in, in Ventura County. And uh, I know it's been a little while since we've had uh, an episode of this podcast. And uh, our, our faithful producer, Chelsea, is here. Chelsea, hello. Hello. How oh, are you? I'm good. You've missed doing that. We've missed doing this podcast. I've missed yes. it so yeah. much. Yes. And I, I apologize for the delay. It's been, We've had some scheduling issues. And then the fall, we I had some uh, personal stuff I had to take care of. And so we had a little hiatus, but we are back. We are back and ready to record some episodes. And Chelsea, are you excited? I am. Oh, I'm excited. We have someone because special you, here. We do, because we have I, uh, none other than the number one realtor in Ventura County. And that's realtor of Liz Donnelly of Remax Gold Coast Real Estate, Realty, whatever it's called. I'm not sure I can take credit for the entire county, but thank you very <laughs> okay, much for the West intro. West Ventura County, the, the, <laughs> the number one realtor uh, in a certain neighborhood in Ventura. I, yes. Um, thank you, Liz, for being here. And um, I did want to kind of um, first uh, uh, ask you kind of generally um, for everyone out there, how are you feeling? You know, maybe you're the barometer of where things are going. How are you feeling about the year ahead for real estate in Ventura County? I think it's going to be a much more even year. We'll see more houses come on the market. Hopefully it'll be a little easier for the agents who've had a hard time finding homes for their buyers, mm -hmm. meaning that hopefully we'll have more choices when <laughs> sellers put their more, houses on the market more yes. as uh, the interest rates come down a bit. That's what mm -hmm. we're hoping for. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, I, I want that too, because I make money when houses go on the market and that's what, that's what I like. Yes. I, I like making money. We want a healthy market, you know, a, a very strong market with supply and demand that matches each other. Oh, right. Mm, yes. Well, and, and I, I guess I want to talk to you a little bit about your approach to real estate and, and not like a whole backstory on your, on your career, but I know now you are the head of the Liz Donnelly group, right? So you're the team leader of that group at, at Remax there. And so you, how many realtors do you have working with you? There are five of us, including myself. Okay. And so, but did you, and you used to be solo, right? A, a long yes. time ago. Okay. So can, can you talk about maybe the differences between being solo and then being um, a, a part of a team? And obviously there's yes. different roles on that team too, right? So as the team leader, it's different than being, you know, the, the, the lowest realtor on there, but. When I started in real estate, I started on a team and mm -hmm. my team leader was Linda Richardson. I started with Remax in 2004. So okay. I'm going into my 20th year oh, now. It was right. October of 2004. And at the time I had a two-year-old and I was pregnant, I remember. Uh -huh. So wow. now I have an 18-year-old in college and a 21-year-old uh -huh. in college. Um, fast forward to probably about eight or nine years ago when I was working on my own. Mm -hmm. At a certain point, it is nice to have teammates that you mm -hmm. work with because there are a lot of us realtors and we're all friends with each other, but real estate is a very solitary job, mm -hmm. um, which people don't really see mm -hmm. until, you know, you get into our role because we're all kind of yeah. competitors with each other, yeah. even though we're, we're friendly. So it's nice to have somebody that if one goes out of town for the weekend, mm -hmm. the other person can support them. Or that if I have a property to market, my teammates might market that same property. And that creates a, a great energy of having two people market one property in different ways. So once I started a team, I realized it would be nice to have a few more of us to mm -hmm. have that energy and like-minded people. We're all women on my team, except mm -hmm. my husband, Kent, who's our team mm -hmm. manager. Okay. And not to say that that might not change one day in the future, but we've really enjoyed working together as, as women and, mm -hmm. you know, we're have families and, you know, doing all the things that we juggle as, as right, working, sure. as working people. And so right. it's just been really fun and rewarding. Um, and then, and at a certain point, if you are kind of a top realtor, right. And, and, you know, kind of maybe what's unsaid is that at a certain point you get busy enough that you just can't handle it on your own. Right. I mean, you kind that of, is you, the unsaid, you, yes. You, yes, you kind of need it. And then, and, the, and to have that support, but then I would imagine like in, as, and I, and I think, you know, our, our business was the, was the same upmarket media. We were Mark and I, uh, uh, are the co-owner of the business. We were both solo shooters. We had our own companies and then we came together. Together. But in part because we got so busy, we just couldn't manage it anymore. And we thought if we can come together and that way we, we can, we can form a team, 
then we can have full-time administrative help. We can have other shooters out there who can go to the properties. And man, that support that that I have felt since we did that three years ago has just been, I mean, it's been life-changing. Yes. Um, I mean, for us, we have uh, Kent, who, like I said, mm-hmm. is our team manager, and Anna Marie. She's mm-hmm. great. Chelsea, you know Anna Marie. <laughs> yes. She Anna Marie. is our client care coordinator, and she basically handles everything when I'm here talking with you or mm-hmm. out with a client. Right. And it's so nice to have that support. Oh, yeah. That's it. And we have that um, with Chelsea. Well, but I, I lost my train of thought because what I was really kind of going for is, is one of the things that I found rewarding about the moving into more of a CEO role is being able to, to, to see my employees grow. It's to bring people in and teach them new skills and have them and have the, you know, see the, the change in confidence, the change, you know, and it's the, the best part. Yeah. Oh, it gives sure. me energy. Yeah. It makes me succeed to see them succeed. Well, yeah. It's great. And, and it's, and then you also, it's like you grow, you know, you grow, if they grow, you grow. I mean, it's just like, it's just this feedback loop that, that really is, is so it's, yeah, I don't know. It's the best. It's really great. Yes. And we all deal with our own clients individually. So it's not that I am passing somebody along. Mm-hmm. It's just that maybe if I have a for sale sign out at a house and you get a call, maybe one of my teammates would be able to help that person instead of losing an opportunity. Um, mm-hmm you know, to, to create a relationship. Right. And then when you're choosing people to be, you know, on the team and not the, you know, and I'm not asking if you're, if you're hiring is the wrong word, but if you're expanding, but like how, what is kind of, is there a criteria that you've used to figure out who are going to be people that I want to work with? Right. Cause that's so, that's yeah. so key. It's, it's tough. It just kind of comes along when it's natural. Mm-hmm. Um, Cindy has been with me the longest and she and I started out as friends and our kids went to school together. Mm -hmm. Uh, Nicole, who has been with me a very long time was a client of mine. Oh, wow. Uh, So it's just, it's different for all of us. And Mm -hmm. it's just really been great. One of my newer team members, Brandy, uh, she was my realtor when we purchased a house in Mammoth and coincidentally had just moved to Ventura. (laughs) And now she splits her time between Ventura and Mammoth. And um, Mandy Martinez is fantastic. And Mm -hmm. she's um, uh, friends... She's, she, oh, right. I have a friend who she is friends with oh, right. who kept saying, you guys need to meet someday. Oh, right, and, right. You know, it's, so it's really just, and, and I felt that when we, we've hired people, it's just, it, it's almost, you, you, you go on vibes in a way. Yes. It's like, I, I just had someone ask me uh, uh, who has a business uh, like ours in another city. He's like, well, how did you, you know, you have Chelsea and like, how did you find her? And how did you know it was her? And I was like, I don't know. I'm just new. It just worked out. And sometimes it's not when you want it to, it just, yes, of course. it just happens. Yes. Yeah. We, we've definitely had that as well. So uh, we've gotten team, you know, we've put ads out. We've just kind of had people approach us. I mean, yeah, the, there's no, there's no one way to do it. Yeah. We're a happy family and we're, we're a nice, a nice unit. We all get along great. And I'm so thankful for that. And, and so as the leader of the team, I mean, I heard, I've heard from one of your teammates that uh, you have a, a certain poster in your uh, in your office. <laughs> so I have a I don't know if you call it a motto or I'll just call it a sensation. Okay. That I feel like I'm a bear that's bringing home salmon uh-huh. to my cubs when oh. I get an offer accepted when I get a listing um, mm-hmm. sign. For some reason, uh, early on in my career, I had a successful day at work and I came home and I told Kent, my husband, like. <laughs> There's the, I'm making the move, the motion of like grabbing salmon with my mouth and throwing it down on the table. I'm like, dinner served. <laughs> so, so I started with this idea that I'm a bear that hunts salmon and uh-huh. just, I don't even really like salmon. I prefer- oh, yeah, well, that's okay. That's a, well, you're feeding it to other <laughs> I'm, people. I'm a halibut. Okay. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, but uh, I do have a large uh, poster in my office of a bear hunting salmon in a stream uh-huh. and um, some other bear and salmon <laughs> memorabilia oh, yeah. in my office. Yeah. So oh, that takes it, a life it keeps on me own. focused, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I should say. <laughs> yeah. Well, how do you stay focused? Um, because I, I know when I see realtors out there, I, I think, I think of realtors sometimes as being incredibly unfocused and, um, and I think to be successful at this, you have to be able to focus, but then you also have to be able to focus while you're being pulled a hundred different ways every single day, all day, every day and into the evening. I'd say I'm not the most organized person. I don't have these systems where I do certain things, certain times of the day, but mm-hmm. I'm very focused and I feel like I multitask well mm-hmm. and 
I'm just always thinking about my business and Mm -hmm. how I can do better, how I can make my clients happy, how I can find more clients. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I love it. And I, you know, there are always days that you don't want to work, but in general, I really enjoy what I do. And I try to have a positive attitude toward making things work. Mm -hmm. Well, how, how, how much do you systematize your, your business? I mean, like, are you kind of, do you, do you have a bunch of systems? Cause I, you know, I'm horrible at that. You're horrible at that. Well, here's the thing. Cause here's what I've noticed actually. I mean, and I don't mind it. I'm, right. I'm okay the way I am, but I am not that person Well, because yeah. I feel like you do get pulled in a lot of different directions and you need to have your mind open to that. You know, there, mm-hmm. there are some people who really like to have their schedule and they know what time they finish. But if I have that mindset and I'm making dinner at mm-hmm. six o'clock and somebody wants to see a house at seven, I probably would try to get them to see it the next day. Instead, mm-hmm. I'll say, I got to go <laughs> and, right. I'll, and I'll go show a house. Right. So I just kind of let the waves take me. Well, and, and one of the reasons I asked that question is because I know I, I look at it from, you know, our client list and who we work with. And, and obviously, you know, you're, you know, our biggest client, uh, an individual client, I think, cause you're the, you know, obviously we've established that. So, but one of the things and, and Chelsea and I, I you can, I am sure you're going to agree with this statement is that when we see Anna Marie call or Liz call, we know there's going to be a shoot and it's going to be dialed and it's going to, and it's going to happen when it, when it, when you say it's going to happen. Yeah. And we don't really have to worry about anything oh, in the so any nice. confliction or anything. Well, happening. Yeah. You guys are always ready to go. It's yeah, well, efficient. And we don't want you to. That's, that's yeah. the well, whole package and, 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 is we want to. Make- and I think it shows, I mean, and I know when, when we show up to a shoot and we're going to photograph a house and the realtor pulls up at the same time we do, that's internally for us. We're going, Oh crap. Because we're hoping that the realtor gets there the, the day before half an hour before. And sometimes the realtor pulls up and it's a vacant lockbox and it's all fine. But you know, when they walk, you, you know, when they walk up and they say to you, Oh, I wonder what we're going to see in here. And you're like, Oh man, this is not good. And, and then it takes us a longer time to shoot the house. It's not, and you know, we're, we actually are agnostic about what we shoot. I mean, we just shoot what's there. Right. And so we can help direct you, but if we're not stagers, you know, we don't have, we don't build in time for our shoots to, to move everything five times. Um, but sometimes that's what has to happen and, and that's okay. But man, it is, is nice. And it, it's, it makes for such a nice collaboration when we can walk in and we know the place is going to be ready to a varying degree. You guys right? are basically a part of our team, our right. home inspectors, the photographers, the advertising that we do, it, it all fits together and making a good impression for everyone. We want you guys to like us. We want your product to look good. We, right. oh, I wish everyone thought that way. <laughs> well, yeah. And, and, and I think so much of it, uh, what we see is, is about being able to manage your clients and set expectations for your exactly. clients. Right. And it's, it's difficult what we go through to get to the point for you guys to show up. Absolutely. And there are those clients though you can't manage. And I know, you know, we have other realtors who are this exact the same way as you, everything's always dialed in. And then sometimes it just isn't, we can't control and then, all yeah, of them. You can't control everything. And so it's just more more of when you kind of see that, that the, the patterns happening. Um, and, and I think that, I don't know how much it gets talked about, uh, but client management is, you know, we work on it for ourselves of, you know, managing the expectations for what our clients oh, yes. are, are going to get. But like, how do you, how do you approach that with your homeowners? Are you talking about those things from the very moment that you do a listing presentation or is this just kind of a, an ongoing? It's, we talk about it during the listing presentation. I call it mothering. I mm-hmm. say, I'm going to mother you, I'm going to boss you and mm-hmm. um, take it however you'd like, but I'm going to give you advice as if I'm your mom. And this is me talking to somebody who is very possibly quite a bit older than me, right. you know, right, <laughs> and, right, and you right, still, right. you know, I like to call it mothering yeah, because sure. it, it really mm-hmm. is. You're um, mothering them through the process of selling their home. And so you give them the, the suggestions and if they want to take it, great. And if they don't, that's okay. Sometimes I'll show them examples of photos that you guys have done and mm-hmm. I'll just tell them the best things that I think they need to do. And if they haven't done them, I'll let them know we'll arrive a half hour earlier and we'll take mm-hmm. everything off the counter for them and put it back the best we can, Right. Um, which is fine too, where we just want everything to work out nicely for everyone. Oh. I love it. Well, I want to set expectations for our audience as well right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little quick break. We're going to come back. We'll have our social media sidebar. Then we're going to talk, have our marketing segment after that. And then we're going to end the show 
with action items. So these are simple things that any realtor can do to help grow their business. And I already heard what Liz's is and it's a banger. So we got to, <laughs> we got to stick around for that. All right. All right, our social media sidebar, uh, you can follow Upmarket Media. It's upmarket.media on Instagram and Facebook. I know realtors love Facebook, so we like to hang out there and, and do stuff, which is basically reposting all the stuff from Instagram onto Facebook, so it's real real exciting. Um, and Liz, where can we find you? I'm on Facebook and Instagram as well. My okay. Instagram oh, is, good. yep, it's Lizzie Donnelly, uh -huh. L-I-Z-Z-E-E, -E, oh, Donnelly, okay. in the house. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yes, yeah, same thing. I post on Facebook and it's, yeah, yeah. You cross post. I cross stuff. post. Yeah. But you, but, um, are, are you, so are you doing your social media yourself? For the most part? Yes. Um, my new listings are posted in the same format mm -hmm. by a person that posts them for me, but sure. I do all of my more action mm -hmm. items and, and try to keep my story active. Not mm -hmm. every day, but, sure. but try to keep it interesting and, um, fun. And you're creating that content yourself. Yes. Yeah. Well, and I know like you're kind of famous a little bit for many things, but one of the things I've heard about is, uh, didn't you used to do like a caravan karaoke? I did. Oh, I that did. sounds fun. It was really fun. We had some great episodes, really good realtors. Um, Fred Evans, um, mm -hmm. I showed you the one with Harold Powell. Right. Javier Castro has done one. We did one with our team early on that was great. They were really fun. And then I'm going to say it was probably due to COVID yeah. that it just kind of stopped. Yeah. And I haven't done one for several years. Yeah, COVID ruined everything. So though. I don't know. Maybe you and Mark oh. uh, may have to. <laughs> oh, I don't say. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll get I, Mark I, in his Shark Week yeah, uh, yeah, there you go. outfits. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> we can sing Baby Shark or something yeah. together. Oh, perfect. Oh, Oh, perfect. That would be great. Yeah. My, uh, the Mark Corcoran, uh, former of uh, was on shark week in his former life as a marine biologist. Now he shoots real estate. Crazy guy. Yep. Um, so I think what, but what I have seen from your, from your, uh, social media, it's not just business. And, and when you are business, I mean, you're having a good time. And I mean, that's, I mean, and it's, it really exudes your personality. Yes. Which I think is kind of key for, it's, it's authentic. And we talk about that all the time in social media. You want to have authenticity. You want to be authentic. Yep. I think of it as a dance. You want to provide the information that you need to get out there, but then you want people to look at it. So you have to be fun. Right. And it's not always easy to be fun. Right. But uh, it's, <laughs> well, it's easier you know. for some people than others, I think. But we make the effort and um, try to... Mm -hmm try to enjoy ourselves. So are you, how, how do you view social media in terms of your marketing? I mean, is this something where you're getting leads and you feel like you're converting people to become clients or is it really just kind of reinforcing all the stuff that's already out there for you? Um, I would like to get more clients and more leads through social media. It's something I want to work on this year, but it's been more of a reinforcement in the past. Mm -hmm. Um, when Facebook was more popular to use, when I would first meet clients, I would friend them on Facebook uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, try to engage that way. Now it's, it's different, you yeah. know, since mm -hmm. we follow each other more than friend each other. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, people just aren't posting on Facebook in the same way anymore. And, and, and I think having that, having realtor content on Facebook is, is tricky. It's a tricky balance where it's like the, the, the stories and stuff are, are it's so much easier just to be quick and have fun. And, you know, and it's still, it almost is that same, like, I, I just, it, it, you get more bang for the buck than you do on that typical realtor Facebook post of like, oh, it's, it's March time for spring cleaning. What's on your spring cleaning agenda this year, this right. year, you know, right. and then no one engages with it whatsoever. So I remember when I posted more on Facebook, you would post something like that. And then your next post, you post a picture of your family at the mm -hmm. beach or, yeah. you know, to make yourself personal too. Right, you don't right. want to just give information. People want to see you and, and how you're interacting in your life so that they can relate to you. Yeah. And we're, we're doing uh, a bit of that, uh, you know, as well, you know, we're always trying to, to add a little more behind the scenes stuff uh, w with our stuff and not have it be about, about work, but it's kind of a little harder when, you know, we're kind of more of a standalone business that we're trying to, we want people to see the faces of us, but we're not posting personal stuff because it's like, well, it's not just Mark's account or it's not just my account. And so it's right. It can be, it can and be our industry tricky. is a little bit different yes, for from sure. each other, yeah, we're uh, business even to business. though we overlap. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, we just, our client base is so niche, like realtors, that's it. Mm -hmm. Right. And so there's a lot of realtors, but you know, it's not, there are more consumers than realtors. Yes, (laughs) exactly. Yeah. You, you have to cast a wider net, although I'm sure it's very specific on who you're trying to to market to. Um, but you know, people with money, people over 18. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Who have the money to buy a house or own a house that they want to sell. I think those are, those are the ones. Um, okay. Thank you for that social media sidebar. We'll be right back with a bunch more content. All right. So let's roll into our marketing moment. And to be a realtor in your position, uh, you know, one of the top realtors, you have to have must have some sort of marketing plan, I would imagine, right? Can you talk about your general philosophies on marketing? Sure. I'd love to. So um, earlier on, I worked more with buyers than with sellers. And, you know, as your career progresses, I, I, I don't know about others, but in my career, I've switched over to working with more sellers than buyers, mm-hmm. probably um, two thirds sellers, one third buyers. Okay. I love working with buyers, but you need more of a marketing plan when you're dealing with sellers than mm-hmm. with buyers for the okay. most part. So I'm going to assume you're asking me about, about sellers. <laughs> I like if I'm hosting an open house and somebody is going around looking at open houses that they come to mind and that they take a brochure that's going to be mm-hmm. better than uh-huh. what they're going to get at other houses, for ah, example. Okay. So that I guess you could say is, is part of a marketing plan. I like well, having yeah, nice, er- nice print advertising. Uh-huh. I, I just like to envision what it must be like to be a, a consumer, a home buyer, and how I can stand out as a home seller to make my property, quote, look better. Mm-hmm. Um, and to make myself as a realtor, of course, if I'm spending the time working on that, I'm right. thinking about future business as well, uh, right. look good as well. So whether it's social media posts, um, the, the print advertising, like we're talking mm-hmm. about the, the follow up. I want it all to be clean and look similar to each other. I really like clean lines and to be direct because I'm like that as a person. Mm-hmm. So I think that my marketing materials have to match. Right. Well, and then, and so, but then when you're talking about that marketing, that's, that marketing is more a function of marketing the home and by, you know, and obviously anytime you're marketing the home, you're also marketing yourself. I mean, that's what we preach all the time is actually, you know, what our market media does is we don't, you know, we don't market homes. We market realtors. Everything we do has the, has the goal of marketing the realtor. And we're, we actually, we don't even care. We we do care when the house sells, but we don't really care because when you get another listing, that's our metric of success, right? It's right. not when that house sells for X amount of dollars. It's like, that's right. You know. You're finished when you walk away. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, 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 and that's the goal for any realtor too, right? Is it, Cause any realtor can sell a house, right? And if it's priced correctly, it's going to sell, but not every realtor is going to get that next listing. So when you make the experience from not, not from, you know, the, the marketing of the home to the, how the open houses feel, how you interact with people, all those things play in together. Are you going to be someone that someone else is going to want to trust to market their home? And to, and to work with because that, that realtor, um, uh, homeowner relationship is a very intimate relationship. I mean, this is, it really like, is. you know, yep. y- yeah, because they're at a vulnerable time in their lives and, and you are there to mother them in a way. And being a realtor, uh, it, it seems that it's like a, a creative business, mm-hmm. uh, where you're, you're showing some marketing materials, you're trying to be unique, but really it's a business of selling the most important asset that somebody has. Right. So I market myself as a business person and mm-hmm. I want to show them the best business experience that they can right. expect. Um, and at the same time, I want to be like a four seasons resort where you just come in and you don't worry about anything and you're well right. taken care of. So it's a balance. And that's, I mean, I don't know if that means marketing, but that's how I market myself. Well, I think it, I, I, I do think it is. And, and some of those, so things that people do are, it is marketing because when someone feels that way, they are going to actually then leave a Google review for you or they're going to tell their friends they're going to. So any, anything you do that actually enhances your client's experience to me can end up being marketing because they're going to talk about it. Right. And when somebody trusts you, then you want to do an even better job for them. Right. You know, yeah, you don't in, in life, yeah, you know, yeah. you, you feel like, well, you know, I've, I've created a relationship that I really appreciate and I want to show such and such friend, business person, anything in our lives, the same respect back. And so it's just, it, it just creates a nice right. synergy. Well, so what, 
uh, I think when you have a lot of listings, the marketing plan can be um, a, a little more clear, right? And, and what we've been thinking about um, in the last few months is in, in how listings relate to agents is like, when you have a listing, that is an asset, right? So it's like, you need to leverage that asset. And, and your realtor has a lot of listings. So probably each individual one isn't quite as important to leverage, but they're I think- They're very important. Oh, they are. Every time it's every very important time. to leverage, uh, like you got to trumpet it out there. That every you have a listing, listing every that time. I do not get, I remember every, oh. every listing that I do get, I appreciate, you know, I always think like that actor line that you're only as good as your last role. Uh-huh. You never know, you know, what right. the future is going to bring. It's right. very important. Well, and so that's why when you have the opportunity, you should jump on it. And so you want to make sure that when you do have a listing, you are maximizing the amount of marketing you can do off of that listing. And that doesn't mean, Oh, you have to get the luxury package from our market media, but you can, but it's also just like, how are you putting this out in the world? Are you doing a bunch of open houses? Are you doing all these things? So, Mm -hmm. um, and obviously when you have that ethos that is feeding into, um, clearly you're getting a bunch more listings. I I say it in a way of, if if you were my, my customer Mm -hmm. selling a house that you want to touch all types of consumers, the type that likes to pick up a piece of paper and look at it, the type that doesn't want to be bothered by calling an agent, but they want to see the house and might be able to buy it, meaning you have to host open houses, the type that wants to look at social media. Um, of course, all the search engines, you know, we all mm-hmm. know they, they all go on there anyways, but the way you present your property on there is so important. Mm-hmm. Uh, the way you write your descriptions, I mean, all of right. it, it just all touches different people and the goal for all of us is to get the most people mm-hmm. interested in a property to, to do the best right. way to sell her. So, well, wh- I did want to ask a little bit too about, um, non-listing related marketing, because so if you are an agent who, who doesn't have a ton of listings, I mean, what are some of the things that you would think about, uh, doing for marketing in that position or, you know, what do you do that, that, that is not listing based for yourself? I see a lot of young, I say young agents by yeah. meaning newer, not necessarily mm-hmm. their age, who do a great job on social media coming into, I see, I'll, I'll give my own examples because I only know what I know, mm-hmm. but coming into my open houses and saying, do you mind if I video and post? Mm-hmm. And then I'll look at them and they do a great job. They don't need to say, this is not my listing. They can say, I'm showing you tours of mm-hmm. such and such houses today on the hillside. Right. And it's great. Like it's, we can all market the same way. You know, mm-hmm. we, we all have access to look at a lot of different right. houses and um, ask agents if we can host open houses for them. Mm -hmm. I did that for years and I'll still do that today. If I don't have a house that I'm selling and I would really like to host an open house, I have no problem asking another agent if I could host one for them. Um, especially in our office, we have, you know, a big brokerage, we do about 20% of all sales in the area. And Mm -hmm. so if there's a part of town that I would like to work in, or one of my teammates would, we can usually find an open house that somebody can host. So, Mm -hmm. and are you targeting uh, that brings up, you know, kind of the, the idea of like farms. I mean, do you have a farm or do you, are, are you targeting specific neighborhoods or are you just kind of more general? I like to say that I'm a business specialist, not a neighborhood specialist, um, is kind of the way I think of it. But of course we all have areas we favor. I grew up in Ventura. I love the hillside. Mm -hmm. Um, I now live in Camarillo and the Las Posas Estates area. I love, you know, that Mm -hmm. side of Camarillo and would love to do more business there. Um, people in the area that I live in Las Posas seem to stay for a long time. So there, there isn't a lot of turnover, but, um, you know, my, the, my primary business comes from Ventura and Mm -hmm. I grew up in different areas around town over the years. I Mm -hmm. love East Ventura. Um, Mm -hmm. like I said, the hillside, the beaches, it's, it's really what I gravitate towards. All that talk of marketing just makes me think about action. (sighs) I love action and that's why I love action items. And so, we're just going to give one simple action item away. A realtor can help grow their business this year. I'm going to go first as the host. I'm going to, I'm going to let the big bear, perfect, the big bear go last. Um, so it kind of relates to something we were just talking about. And I think a, a cool action item could be to not to pick a farm, but for an agent to maybe pick a neighborhood and then produce some social media content about that. Just what kind of Liz was saying, maybe there's an open house in the neighborhood that you're interested in. Go ask that realtor, you know, at Caravan or whatever. Hey, can I video? Cause I think it's important if someone else is listening, you should kind of ask them if it's okay. Um, I think, um, but then also maybe do a little reel about a restaurant in the neighborhood, do a little reel about the bakery or about the park or, or whatever, but just all of a sudden be seen as uh, like a little bit of an expert on one certain part of Ventura or Camarillo or wh- wherever it is you live. 
I think mm-hmm. that's great. Yep. Sometimes we spread ourselves too thin and you kind of lose who you are right. in other people's eyes. They they want to see that you are an expert at something. Yes. Uh, totally agree. We fake it till we make it. Yeah, exactly. So I'm an expert podcast host now. All right, we got it. So Liz, come on, action item. Well, mine's pretty basic. What I've been thinking about lately, um, we recently met with all of our teammates to figure out what our goals are for this year. And one very simple thing is putting five business cards in your pocket when you leave the house in the morning, or if your pockets are tight and mm-hmm. you know something else, don't bend them and pass them out by the end of the day. Ooh. And you have to do that every day for five days. So you have to pass out 25 cards mm-hmm. in the week and keep doing it every week if you'd like. But, um, and it's harder than it seems, but anybody that you might cross paths with, Mm -hmm. you want them to know that you're a realtor. Maybe you go out to lunch. You could leave a business card uh, with the bill when you pay if Mm -hmm. if you're kind of running out of ideas (laughs) that week of what to Uh do. But um, if you go into a dry cleaner or you're meeting with a friend or you go to the dentist, you know, give them the card. If you're giving somebody business, it's okay to ask for business back. And it's okay to be a little bit um, passive aggressive in the way you do it. If you're shy to, you can just say, I have a personal goal I've set. I have to give out five cards today. Oh, so yeah. here's my her. card. I'm a realtor. I would love any oh, business that that you could give me or pass my card on to anyone you know that right. might want to buy or sell a house. It would mean so much to me. Thank you for helping me achieve my goal. And that way oh. it doesn't seem like you're really being so pushy. Uh And at the same time, we need people to know what we do. Yeah. Well, and I think so. pass out five cards today, people. Yeah, that's good. And especially I think if you can frame it like that, I mean, that's kind of, you're showing a little bit of, you're showing a little bit of humility. You're showing a little bit of vulnerability. It's the dance. And yeah. And that, and then I think that makes you more likable and you're also just being very straightforward. You're not just, you know, it's, yeah, I don't know. I love that. There's a, um, a lot of realtors who listen say, well, I already know this because it was a Brian Buffini program or Uh it probably still is. He's a a real estate motivational uh uh, coach. So I did this hundred day to greatness program. And I don't remember how many days we had to do the five cards a day, if it was for the whole time or what it was. But on this particular day, I was really not happy with myself because I hadn't given out all my cards and I was driving Mm -hmm. home. I was on my street and I saw our gardener at a different house. So I stopped the car I speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys know that or not, but he's Spanish speaking. And so, um, I came out and I said, you know, Jesus, I'll say Mm -hmm. it in English, but I have this goal to give out these cards and, um, here's my business card. And he says, well, I already know you're a realtor. There's no way I can buy a house, but I would really like to long story short, they figured out that they actually could buy a house. It turns out that he was our street gardener, but he was also the full times, uh, facility person mm-hmm. over at Sterling Hills <laughs> okay, in the uh-huh, mornings. Uh-huh. He was doing all of their gardening in the mornings and our, our street mm-hmm. in the afternoons. And they had money saved. They were renting a small apartment and they ended up buying a house from me. We probably closed two months after that because I gave out my last card. I was like, wow. oh my gosh, I can't believe that well, actually happened. To the gardener. And that's someone that, you know, probably most realtors are just driving by. Oh yeah, they're never going to buy a house because that the, you, you don't make enough money. So when you job, said right? that you want to, you know, market such and such, I said, no, no, no. everybody 18 yeah. and over. <laughs> if right. you're an adult, you, you never know what's possible or, sure. or how you can a help lot of them assumptions about position people. themselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, yeah. you might motivate somebody to become a saver or to join mm-hmm. forces with their girlfriend, boyfriend, right. parent, and and become a homeowner. Right. It's exciting. Uh-huh. All right. Well, Liz Donnelly, thank you very mm-hmm. much. Very Free appreciate fish. it. Yeah. Thank oh, you. Oh, all right. All right. We will be back with a bunch more episodes. I mean it this time. We are coming back strong. Real VC coming at you. Thanks, well, Liz. We're out. <laughs> we're out. Real VC is a production of Upmarket Studios. This episode was produced by Chelsea Froelich and edited by Bethany Diedrich. We'll be back shortly with a brand new episode. But in the meantime, we hope that all your transactions will be smooth. Thank you for everything. Thank you.